Somebody bless the name of Jesus. God is good. And all the time. If you came here with a praise tonight, just lift your hands and give him the highest praise. Magnify the Lord with me. Happy Sabbath, Cayman. It's so delightful to be with you here this evening to share in your Youth Congress 2024. Let me thank you, my friend, Pastor Harry, for your kind words of introduction and for letting them know that we're not just a come. <laughs> we're coming from a far way. And Sister Merle and the team of youth leaders for extending the invitation for me to come and share in this weekend as we show them that we are rated R. Resilient, refocused, and reconnected. And, and so I, I want to just let you know that we're looking forward to great things in the Lord. Good to feel at home and see so many familiar faces in the place. If I begin to call names, I might run into trouble. But thank you very much, Music Minister Beswick. I've, I've always been blessed by your rich music ministry and a wonderful bunch of singers, several of whom I've known for some time. Patrice. <laughs> and uh, for blessing us with that wonderful song. It was powerful. The praise team also ministered to my soul, Garnesia. And I give God thanks for the rich young people ministry that's happening in the Cayman Islands. Somebody give them some amen. So my wife, Georgie, and I are very happy to have flown from Jamaica to be here with you. Others wanted the weekend, but came and locked it down a long time ago. <laughs> this morning, I had the privilege to join um, Brother Facey, Principal Facey, and his lovely team of teachers and students at CA. And we know that in life, we don't chicken out because the recipe for success is what? Yeah. KFC, key focus constantly, M. Eh? Don't chicken out. And what do we focus on? KFC. It's a three piece. It's a big deal. And what's the next KFC? The king, the fraternity, and the career. Right there, sir. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and, and all those, all those who cannot, all those who cannot relate to it a bat. <laughs> it means that they missed all of what took place this morning. But it was a wonderful engagement there over at Cayman Academy. And I know that the students there are brilliant. Just listen to how they roll that off. Come on and put your hands together for them. Yes. So as I'm waiting for my monitor to come up, it came up just now and just flashed back off. But I'm glad to know that it's on the screen because it's Friday night and I just want to give you some appetizer and the main course will come tomorrow. Sounds very good because I don't want you to come here tomorrow morning yawning. I want you to be resilient, refocused and reconnected. Let me tell you, when I look at the, the cadre of young people, Theodore, that are involved in the program here, the musicians are young people. You know, the the, the, the Tech team folks are young people. Come on, somebody. Pastor Vaughn, who has been traveling me around, young people, yeah? <laughs> you know, the praise team, young people. Let me tell you, this is nothing strange in the Seventh-day Adventist church because I want you to understand that oftentimes we've painted a very old picture of God because we want to keep him in a certain status quo and so that it, we can feel better about him. But let me give you a little backdrop as I preamble the message that's coming up. When you look look in the Bible, Jesus died in his early 30s. He was a senior youth leader. Come on, somebody. Still in the youth ministries department by our calculations. Ellen G. White was called at age what? 17, but you want her to look like a grandmother. Young people business. Most of the disciples, they were young people. Everywhere in scripture when God wanted to do something amazing and game changing and transformational, ask David if you think I'm kidding. Young people. When he called Joseph, he was what? A young man. So young people are not the future of the church. Young people are the church right now. Come on now. And, and, and that is why that is why the prophet Joel as he anticipated what God would do for the end times, he said in chapter 2, 27, 28 going down that it shall come to pass somebody say it's coming, yes? That I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and he says that your sons and daughters shall do what? 
what? Prophesy. And the Adventist church believes in the spirit of prophecy. And God is saying that I'm going to prophesy to some young people. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see what? Visions. And Solomon says, where there is no vision, the people perish. I don't know. You didn't get that right now. So let me match it up. Somebody say match it up. Now, if, we're, if the people need vision in order not to perish, and God says, when I pour out my spirit, the young men will see vision. It means that without young people in the church, he mash up. Hello, somebody? Without young people in the church, it what? Mash up. So I just said all of that to let you know, young people, that you are special, that you are valuable, that you are important. Important, yes? And nowadays when you say those things that the young people agree, Sister Patrice, they don't just sit back like when we were younger. They put their fingers together like this and say, write this up. Come on, you see what I'm talking about? Let's try now. All those who know some of them younger, you know, oh, come on. Write this up. Resilient. Refocused. And reconnected as I get a little more on my monitor. I, I want to speak to you tonight on the subject as a preemption to tomorrow's message on the in keeping with our theme resilient refocused and reconnected i want to look at the subject this is so lit <laughs> this is so lit bow your heads with me for prayer everlasting father no god as we open up your words please open up our hearts to receive them through the power of the holy spirit Anoint me, Lord, to play the part that you've asked me to, that I might be faithful in delivering the message. And may we all receive your words gladly and apply the lessons from them to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please go back to that um, first slide for me. Uh, and I will guide you from there. This is so late. It's running ahead of me. So we, we might have to allow them to do some clicking, if anything. So let's go to slide number two from the top after the banner slide. So we can go. So we're going to go faster. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That's the one. The story is told of a group of young people who came to the entrance of the promised land. They were so excited and Jesus came down to visit with them. When Jesus came down to visit with them, Jesus thought that naturally the young people would have wanted to go right away into heaven. But one young man speaking on behalf of the entire team said, Hey God, we were taught that you gave us freedom of choice. Is that so? And he said, yes, that's so. What's the point? He said, well, we want to sample hell for one day and heaven for one day and then decide where we want to spend eternity. <laughs> he, the Lord was appalled, but indeed God never made you as robots. He gave you freedom of choice. So they decided to go to hell on day one. When they entered hell, Satan was having a big bashment party down there. All the drinks on the house were free. They were having the time of their lives. And they were just drinking and singing and enjoying themselves. And then they said, hey guys, it's time for the optics. So it was time to take photographs to put on their social media pages. And when they put them up, hashtag this is so lit even as that sticks one more time they were having the time of their lives the biggest entertainments were down the entertainers were down there in hell the biggest names the biggest brands and the folks were like oh my gosh they were telling a lie on hell all along on day two it was time to go to heaven somebody say heaven they heard great singing when they heard the beautiful singing of the voices of the angels mixed with that of the redeemed they wondered what kind of singing were we really listening to down there on earth the food was beyond comparison it was the best tasting food they've ever had the fruits were just out of this world literally out of this world and the scene was so pristine they were just there basking in the glory of it as we click on and then they came to the end of day two after getting just a simple orientation to hell when they came back to Jesus they were all excited and Christ asked them the question how do you want to spend eternity? They were silent for a moment until one started to speak on behalf of the group and said, well, you know, God, um, 
we, we appreciate everything you have done to try and save us. We know that you died on Calvary and they really treated you badly. It's a pity you never destroyed them. You know, but thank you so much for your love and your patience and your kindness. But we really wanted to go into heaven. But yesterday when we were in hell, it was so late. <laughs> you know, and the mother, hey, hey, hey. So uh, no hard feelings, Jesus. We want to spend eternity in hell. The Lord asked them the question, are you certain about this? To which they said, we are absolutely sure. So off they went from heaven's gate and into an elevator down into hell on the third day, hoping to get an experience like they had on day one. But as soon as they exited the elevator, instead of that air-conditioned, high-top quality party with Satan in all white, you know, they stepped into a ballroom of fire. And as they were burning and squirming and crying out, Satan was no longer the angel of light that was a disguise, but he, threw, he showed himself as the fiery dragon who wants to destroy your soul. And while they were there burning, one of them cried out, Satan, what happened to all the nice things we had down here? Day before yesterday, Satan laughed and said, ha, 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 that was just a marketing promotion. <laughs> Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, young people all, Satan will lead you to a hall of fame, but you will end up in a hall of flame when you touch down in that hall of shame. You never heard the preacher here tonight. Satan will lead you to a hall of fame, but you will end up in a what? Hall of shame if you end up in the hall of what? Flame. Which is why you can't afford yourselves to be distracted. You have to be resilient, refocused and what? Reconnected. The wise man Solomon with all his wisdom points out in Proverbs 14 verse 12 that there is a way that seems right to a man. Somebody say, I saw it, look. But in the end it leads to what? Death. And that's why Ellen White says, young people, we should guard well the avenues of our souls. And what do we use to guard the avenues? What are the avenues of your souls? No, we're not talking about the road that you just drove on to come to Northside. It's talking about your senses. Because, you see, until Satan can access your senses, he cannot break down your defenses. You never heard the preacher now. In order for Satan to break down your defenses, he has to first get access to your what? Senses. So watch me now. Let's go back to how this entered the world. Satan shows up and he tempts Eve and the first thing Eve did, she saw the fruit and there is sense number one. Then as she heard the serpent speaking, she was like, Psst. so young ladies, now you know where that Psst comes from, right from a serpent. Psst. You understand? That was sense number two. And then she reached out and she touched it, that's feeling sense number three. And given that she had not eaten of the tree before Brother Watkins, naturally she would have smelled it, and there goes sense number four. And now she placed it in her mouth and she tasted it, and Eve had no sense. And the moment Satan gets rid of your senses, then he's able to break down your defenses. Right? That's right there. Come on now, young people. So follow me now. When we talk about resilience, it means that you have to be very careful of the environment you're striving and striving. And even though you might slip sometimes because Satan sometimes fools you, you have to rise up again and stay in the arms of Jesus. And so it brings us to our main preaching portion for tonight from the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Somebody say that chapter 12. Solomon says, remember now. When must you do so? You said, notice the usage of the word now. If he had said, remember the creator, then perhaps you'd say like some, I'm going to wait until I'm 70 and I have some arthritis and I can't do anything else bad and I will just give the church the rest of that. But Solomon says, remember when? Now you're created in the days of your what? Your youth. Before the evil days come and the years draw near where you shall say, I have no what? Pleasure in them. While the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened and the clouds do not return after the rain. And so there are three seas that Solomon um, brings about here. He had found it upon the seas, but this is a different set of seas. The first sea is to choose the creator in your youth. The second sea is to commit your energies to God. And the third sea is to create the judgment you want. So come on now, what's C number one? Don't say Caribbean C. What's the first C? Choose God in your youth. Somebody say now. Mm. 
The second C, commit your energies to his service. Somebody say now. And the third C is to create the judgment you want. Somebody say now. So Solomon then goes on to say why it is we should choose God now. In verse 3, he breaks down the cycle of man's deterioration as he comes forth budding in his youth and gradually he goes away. He says in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. What do you use to do housekeeping? Your hands. All that wiping and dusting and sweeping and mopping. Solomon says, young people, don't wait until you're old and grown to serve the Lord. You must serve the long Lord before your hand them start to shake. Come on now. Yes? And the strong men bow down. Don't wait until you are clutching to the crutches for you to come to Jesus. God wants you when you are strong. That's why the old song says, we have heard thy call, Lord Jesus. And our hearts respond with joy. We will pledge thee our allegiance to thy call. Cause or all employ. If you know it, say it with me. The youth of the world for the man of Galilee. The youth of the world from all sin and self set free. Every talent pledged in service. Now and through eternity, the youth of the world for the man of Galilee. Then he goes on to say, listen, when the grinders cease because they are few, what do you use to do the grinding? Solomon says, you must serve Jesus before you enter the adventures of dentures. Hello, somebody. Don't wait until your teeth start dropping out to come to church. I shall hallelujah. <laughs> God wants you with your teeth. Come on, somebody. He says, because there are few, and those that look through the window grow dim. What do you use to look? Solomon said, don't wait until you're blind before you come to church. We want you to see so when the praise team puts the lyrics on the screen, you can come and shout, we are a children. I said, I want to talk this. God wants you when all your faculties are intact. Don't give God the what left. God wants the best of your life. Tell me more, Solomon. Why should I choose the creator now. And why should I commit my energies to him? Because that's the only way I can be truly useful to his cause. He says, when the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of the grinding is low, when you don't have any teeth, you have to keep the mouth shut tight. That is why when my grandfather lost his teeth and entered the adventures of dentures, and I used to spend uh, some service with him because he was a if you may, a retired Seventh-day Adventist church attender, but he was a, a Christian just the same, just shut in. And then one day I went and he was singing a new song to me. And because of the teeth situation, he couldn't call the words properly. And I never had any Google now to Google any part of the song. So you had to use the Google of your ears. And when he started the song, he said something like this. I love that man. And he chewed for about 15 seconds. And then he sung something else. And I couldn't hear the something else. But after a while, Pastor Harry, I said to myself, I got it. It must be a Jamaican song. Because this is what I learned because of the teethless singing. I love that man from dear that dear. <laughs> so I thought the song said, I love that man from dear that dear. <laughs> It's a, it's a good thing I never came to, went to church and sung the song because I discovered that the song said, I love that man from Galilee. <laughs> but because of the teeth, from there, that there. <laughs> God wants you with your teeth. He says, when one rises up at the sound of birth before, because old people don't expend a lot of energy, they don't sleep very soundly. That is why when some of you used to teeth out of the yard and Jim Screechy come in one o'clock and think granny sleeping, granny peeping, come out somebody. Because they wake up at the slightest sound. And the Bible says, and all the daughters of music shall be brought when low. In other words, your voice ain't strong and beautiful like the singers just now. Now that you are old, you sound like a granny. God wants you when your voice is powerful. Come on, somebody. And that is why I am troubled when young people come to church and act like they're afraid to sing. But you sung tonight. You don't have to say amen for yourselves. Uh, because what we find is that some of our youth are so caught up in being popular, they forgot to be spiritual. Uh, they are so caught up with getting followers, they forgot to follow Jesus. Uh, so when it's time to sing Beyonce, you're loud. Uh, when it's time to sing John Legend, you're loud. 
loud. When it's time to sing Jay-Z, you're loud. But when it's time to sing the hymns, your face is long like God has done you something wrong. The Bible says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart and in his courts with praise. I will be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember, Pastor, it's just appetizer tonight. So God wants you to come and serve him when your voice is still crisp and beautiful, mellifluous and powerful to be a part of the praise team and the choir. Those in favor say hi. Right there, so right there. Also, they are afraid of height, so you can't send them upstairs faster. <laughs> and of terrors in the way, so they can't handle. Listen to this one now. When the almond tree blossoms, the King James says, when the almond tree shall flourish. It sounds very beautiful, but it's not talking about the Cayman Islands vegetation. It's just a lovely expression to say that your hair get gray. But nowadays, it's difficult to know when the ears go gray, Sister Merle. When I was young and old people didn't want to show off their almond tree flourishing, they would buy a little thing they call cover gray, brother Facey. And they would just cover it up with the cover gray. And those who had money, instead of using cover gray to hide gray hair, they would invest in a nice wig. <laughs> but in this modern time, you can't even use wig for this crab granny because everybody's wigging. <laughs> <Somebody. laughs> wiggy, wiggy, wiggy. <laughs> All over the place. And those who don't want to go wig, they invest in premium HBO here belonging to others. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I talk about some of those tomorrow. But Solomon is saying, remember God before your hair go gray. Don't wait until your energies have been utilized for all the evils of life for you to show up for God. God is deserving of the strength of your youth. The song says, give of the best. Come on, tell you the master. Give of what? The strength of your youth. God deserves your energies. Let the church say amen. He says the grasshopper is now a burden. So you have to be walking now. Because I would have got a civic center for the youth program. But boy, the arthritis in the foot. <laughs> arthritis in the foot, Baba. God said, listen, man, I want you to come strong. So when the praise team come and singing, walking, you don't have to be stuck. You can't walk. Come on, somebody. God wants you when your feet are powerful to be on the marching band and to sing marching. We are the pathfinder stronger to be master guide and senior youth. Don't wait until you're old and pop down to commit to God. Remember him now. And it says, and desire fails. And what happens at the end, young people? For man goes to his eternal home, and the mourners go about the street. So he says, remember your creator before the silver cord is loose. Because you are now shaky, you can't hold on on the tread no more. Or the golden bowl is broken. So because Pastor Harry comes over for lunch, you go pick up the china, and the china drop on Cayman. And breaks. Because you are now shaky. Or the, or the picture at the fountain is shattered. And in those times when this was written, they didn't have water supply coming into the homes like you do. They had to go to the well. And they would have the pitchers there in order to take up the, the water. And the wheel is broken at the well. In other words, you have been a part of the village for so long, everything in Cayman is breaking down. And things are changing. Satan wants you to reserve your energies for sinful things. And to give God that. But the truth is that he doesn't want you to give anything to God. Your best life is found in Jesus Christ. Come on somebody. Yes. Your best life is found in Jesus Christ. Turn to your neighbor and tell them. Your best life is found in Jesus Christ. Everything that God has blessed you with. Satan wants to snatch it. And use it for his purposes. So when Satan listens to the quality of musicians that you have up here in Cayman, Satan comes and he says, young man, you're so foolish. If I had talent like you, I would not be using it for church. Church ain't giving you no money. I'll be backing some of those big singers and pop stars in Cayman, and I'll be traveling to the U.S. to become one of them Grammy Award musicians. Uh, Satan wants to take it all away. When you sound like you can sing, Satan said, girl, that voice ain't belong to church. That voice belongs to Hollywood. Hollywood, it's Jesus voice because remember Satan will lead you to a hall of fame but you will end up in a hall of shame if you end up in the hall of flame 
Very important. Then at the end of it all, Solomon says, young people, don't be fooled. Don't be duped. Don't you allow Satan to throw you off course. Because you see, at the end of it, the dust will return to the earth as it was. And the spirit will return to God who gave it. In other words, God gave us life. And when you come to the end of the road, the life goes back to him. So Solomon says, vanity of vanity, says the preacher. All is vanity. That is why many of these people who believe that materialism could give them joy, they were so miserable in their lives. You see, when we were younger, we thought that every problem could be fixed by money. So when you wanted food and you had to eat chicken back, you say, if I had money, I could get oxtail and, and succulent oxtail in balsamic reduction and garlic herb potatoes and exotic market vegetables. Come on, somebody. And you say, if they had enough money, I could take planes like taxi, Mumbai, Dubai, and all of those things. But then we have seen so many of these celebrities, they have so much money and yet they are miserable. And then some of them have king size Californian king size beds and they can't sleep in the night. But those who are sleeping on a little cot join Bingy Store. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Because at the end of the day, your true satisfaction doesn't come from material acquisitions, it comes from the Lord. That's why the Bible says, I thou will keep him in what? Perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Michael Jackson had the money but he was still acting funny. With the Houston had the money but she was acting funny because it's not about what you possess but who possesses you. And when God is in charge of your life it doesn't matter what you face you are going to be resilient. You are going to be refocused and you will never lose your way because you will always be reconnected. Come on somebody. So Solomon says, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart do what? Keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the what? The tablet of your heart. And so find what? Favor and I esteem. You see, people, when they want to get by, they tell you that you have to have links. So you can't get certain things done in, a, in, in Cayman if you don't have links. And if you're back in Jamaica, you know, if you don't have links, then people push you all over the place and you have to join long lines and sponge. But let me tell you something, young people. When you have Jesus, you have the link of links. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I said, when you have Jesus... You have the link of links. People are going to be asking you, how comes your life so nice? You say, I'm a linky. <laughs> I always say, you're linky. You know? They want him to Sister Merle. Sister Merle is a good linky, but that's not the linky. They say, well, I wonder if it's Dr. Harry. That's a good linky, but that's not the linky. I wonder if it is Pastor. Let me tell you, the linky of linkies is Jesus Christ. When you have Jesus, you will find what? Favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own what? Understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your what? Pa. So in order, watch me now as I bring it together. Because Satan knows that if you choose God, in your youth, God is going to bless you with favor and high esteem. Satan tries to distract young people from God. But look at my eyes, young people. Whenever you have an attraction to a distraction in your Christian interaction, stay close to Jesus and don't cause an infraction because it will have a negative reaction. Hello, somebody. Whenever you have an attraction to a distraction in your Christian interaction, Stay close to Jesus and don't cause an infraction because it will have a what? A negative reaction. So Satan knows that as long as young people are focused on Jesus, I am so nice. <laughs> this is so lit. So he tries to distract us. And look what the devil wants to distract you with. Look at that there. That is what they have. You see them goat horns? The Bible says, by their fruits you shall what? Know them. But because some of us hear pretty voice and sweet tunes, we don't pay attention to the imagery. 
Hello, somebody? You have to look at what these people represent. You see all them symbols and signs? This is why some of our heads are mashed up and messed up. Because when you watch these people and you tune into their video and you're there like, they're like oh my gosh, this is so hot. It is so not. <laughs> so young people like to fit in sometimes. But God never called you to fit in. God called you to stand out. Lord of mercy. Hello. So when you look at all these images, put up this one, you know. You see all these signs. These people are, have sold their souls to the devil. And because they sold their souls to the devil, then they belong to him. So when you see this is a symbol of a hairstyle. Once upon a time, when the women want to look good, they put in one nice rebiaki. Or canical and if they have money, they put in um, Brazilian frontal. And all these expensive. You see what kind of hairstyle they put this one ahead? And when you see it, you're like, oh my gosh, that's so creative. Huh? And they believe that they are it. They are it not. There's a way, finish it up with the church, that seems right to a man. But in the end, where does it lead? It leads to death. They have sold their souls to the devil. And there's a little granny saying, go to the next slide. He said, if you sleep with dogs, you rise with fleas. Come on, somebody. Right, that's up. If you sleep with dogs, you rise with fleas. And that is why when you see the symbolism, look at them. These people, you have to at least give them their props. Go to the next. And you know what the prop is? They are not trying to deceive us. Yet we have allowed them to deceive us. You, you never got it. You never got it. You see, it? once upon a time, in order for the wolf to come into the sheepfold and destroy the sheep, then all the wolf had to do was to dress like a sheep. But because the sheep have become so gullible, even when the wolf put on him wolf suit, the sheep still fly the gate. They're not hearing the preacher here. These people show us their symbolism and their commitment to devil worship. All the days of their lives. And that's why young people have to be refocused. Take your minds off them and let the master of the mind, the mind of the master, be the master of the mind. What a thing made all these pop stars so miserable. They are making all the money. Remember Michael Jackson and all these folks? And folks wearing kinds of rings, certain rings, and they are joining the Freemason. They were just siding over themselves to the devil. And when Satan has your mind, you are senseless. And when you are senseless, look at this one. So there we go signing over, transferring Satanism into our minds, and wondering why we are so miserable. And everything we look to fail us. And we believe that we just need more of it or we need to try something else. All you need is Jesus. Come on, somebody. Go to the next slide. Don't sign away your soul to Satan. So what must you do? James 4 verse 7 says, Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will what? Flee from you. True joy doesn't come from doing what Satan wants. True joy comes from Jesus Christ. That is why the psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us what? Go into the house of the Lord. You have done well by coming into the house of the Lord today as we transform Civic Center into church. Because this is where it is truly lit. <laughs> Look at 1 John as I bring it home. Chapter 2, 15 through 17. The appetizer for the main course tomorrow. And tomorrow's message is youth on life support. Youth on life support. Satan distracts you by saying, YOLO, you only live once. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Don't fool yourself. If you are born once, you will die twice. You will still die because of sin. And in the judgment after you've been punished for how long God will determine, you will die eternally. But if you are born twice, born in sin like all of us, and born again in baptism, you will still die because of this sinful world. But on the resurrection morning, you shall never die again. Come on. So when you hear these nice young people statement, TikTok, yellow, you only live once. And that is Satan's way to say, girl, why are you trying to keep your chastity? Go and run wild. You only have one life. It's a life from the pit of hell. 
do not love the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is what? Not in him. For all that is in the world, tell me some of the things. The lust of the flesh. I'm the what? Lust of the eyes. You see the senses coming out here? I'm the what? Pride of life is not of the Father, but of the what? World. And the world is what? Passing away and the lust of it. But watch this now. But he who does the will of God, come on somebody. He who does the will of God uh, abides forever. Somebody say forever. So don't find joy in bling bling because bling bling is transient. Don't find joy in being popular and trying to fit in because that is also passing. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? And so oftentimes we find excuses when we fail to do what God says because it's the easy way out. But everyone has to take responsibility for his soul. And young people believe that because they are youthful, God will excuse them. Let me tell you, if you are bright enough to do external exams, you are bright enough to do Jesus. <laughs> Hello, somebody. If you are bright enough to do well at Cayman Academy and whatever schools you attend, you are bright enough to do Jesus. So sometimes we're sitting down waiting for God to do for us what he has already empowered us to do for ourselves. We have to be resilient. He has already provided the power through the Holy Spirit. We have to be refocused and choose to reconnect with him. Listen to this quote as you jump down about three slides. Some of us are sitting down waiting for God to do something that he has already enabled us to do for ourselves. Lord, you know. Because we don't want to change, we play victims of our sinful nature. Instead of claiming our victory through the divine nature. So that we can excuse ourselves from giving up the things that we don't want to let go of. Young people, you see when it comes on to faithfulness. And this is not just for you. I'm just saying young people are like because it's our weekend. Yeah, we're still young. You see when it comes on to faithfulness. In this modern time, Pastor Vaughan. Most things are automatic, automated. Fingerprint, open the door, <laughs> clap and turn on the light. <laughs> Alexa, you get the weather <laughs> and all sorts of things. Let me tell you this, but faithfulness is never operated on artificial intelligence. Faithfulness cannot survive on AI. It, is survive, it will survive on SI, spiritual intelligence. Come on, somebody. You have to have some spiritual sense. Alexa, can give your faithfulness. Faithfulness is a choice and it's not an automated one. It's manual. If you don't change your gear, it will stall up in here. So each of us must choose to be faithful to God. When it comes on to making money, when you are working, Alexa can't take the tide out of your bank account for you. You have to decide whether you will remit it. You, you come to say, Alexa, please make me feel like going to church this morning. Okay. Siri can't do it for you. It is a choice that each of us has to make for ourselves. Come on, somebody. God says, Peter, has made us partakers of the divine nature that we are able to live the life that he desires for us. But Satan is a distractor. But don't let Satan trump you out of your blessings. Be resilient and fight back. And if you have lost your way, be refocused and get reconnected. Because Satan will lead you to a hall of fame. But you will end up in a hall of shame when you touch down in the hall of flame. For there's a way that seems right to a man. When you look at it, it looks good. When you feel it, it feels good. And if you smell it, it smells good. And if you what? Taste it. It tastes good. And when you listen to it, it sounds good. But in the end of it, it's not good. So here now, the final point is done. Verse 13 of Ecclesiastes 12. Create the judgment you want. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Jump down to it. And keep his commandments. The next one. For this 
is the whole duty of man or man's all, as the New King James Version says. For God will bring every work into judgment, whether good or evil. So if you want a good judgment, stand in Jesus. Because if you stand without Jesus, you will have no coverage soever. The true joy is found in Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Satan can make your life lit, but he lights it up with hellfire. <laughs> but Jesus can also make your life lit. He lights it up with his righteousness. If you want the righteousness of Jesus to light up your life, just raise your hand and say, Lord, light me up. <laughs> Touch me the key of E flat as we recommit ourselves to God tonight, indicating to him that God, I want you to help me not to be distracted, but to remain focused and connected to you, that I will not lose my way, but I will choose you in my youth. I will commit my energies to your service. And I will create the judgment I want by living in your favor. I want you to stand as a commitment as I do this song, E flat there. It goes like this, you know it. When I need him, I know where to find him. In my place of prayer, his spirit Overs near for Jesus' voice gently gives me my direction, and I'll follow that voice that I hear his voice. Makes the difference when he speaks, he relieves my troubled mind, and it's the only voice I hear that makes the difference, and I'll follow one day. At a time. Listen to this now. For his voice is a strong and a mighty tower. Casting down every stronghold in my life. He's the master of the wind. And see that rages. But when he speaks, all my darkness turns to light. Hear the last verse now. I have heard other voices speaking to me. That's the distraction. To deceive and to lead me astray but you know why I'm glad but the shepherd's voice is different than all others I'm his sheep and I know my shepherd's way for his voice somebody worship the Lord makes the deep When he speaks, he relieves my troubled mind. And amidst all the distractions, uh, and it's the only voice I have that makes the difference. If you will follow the voice of Jesus, stand with me. And I'll follow one day at a time. Come on, it's the only voice I hear. Come on. Yes, it's the only voice I hear that makes the D. I want you to sing that again. It's the only voice. It's the only voice I hear that makes. Let's hear them two times without the music. Come on, with the drum alone. It's the.
Let's hear all the young men sing. It's the only voice. Come on, young men. Let's hear the young ladies by themselves. It's the only voice I hear. Come on. Let's hear the entire civic center. It's the only voice. It's the only voice I hear that makes the difference. And I'll follow one day at a time. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. Somebody give him the highest praise. Come on, shout the name above every other name. Shout the name above every other name. What is his name? Jesus. Don't be distracted. Be resilient. Refocused and reconnected. Because it's only as you stand in the righteousness of Christ can you truly say, This is so lit. Right, Dessa. Let us pray. The music hushes. Our minds are focused on heaven. We pray. Everlasting Father, Lord God. We banish Satan back to the pit of hell with all his demonic forces. We confound every principality and power in the mighty name of Jesus. We beat back every force of darkness because we accept tonight the light of the world. Jesus Christ who lights up the life of the believer. Lord, forgive us where we have sinned. And I've been distracted, not recognizing that our youthful energy should be committed to you. For we should choose you in our youth and therefore chart or create the judgment we want. I pray that you will renew your Holy Spirit in every young man, every young woman, and even those who are young at heart. May you cleanse us and renew us in our walk with you, that our zeal might be to allow you to order our steps in your words. May you anoint the youth of the Cayman Islands Conference from coast to coast and fill them with the promise of Joel chapter 2 to pour out your Holy Spirit upon them that they might prophesy and they might see vision to lead the church home to victory in your everlasting arms. So tonight, Lord, we claim that promise for ourselves. When Peter and the other apostles got a little taste of it at Pentecost, they declared, this is it. That was written by the prophet Joel. But we believe that Joel's prophecy is twofold and that it will be fulfilled in our time. So Lord, we avail ourselves to you as we listen to the voice of Jesus and we await the power of the Holy Spirit to make us resilient refocused and reconnected young people of the Cayman Islands Conference availing ourselves to your service we pray and we say thanks in Jesus name let the church say Amen, Amen.